Hey everyone, I wanted to talk a little bit about working with and organizing your Photoshop documents for creating liveries for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now I've been working with Photoshop since version 3, and, and I don't mean CS3, I mean version 3, which was released in the mid-90s. And the new big new feature for version 3 of Photoshop was that layers were added, so that was the big new thing. So I've been working with Photoshop for quite a while, and I'm hoping that I can pass on some tips and tricks that'll help you out. So what we have here on the screen is the fuselage for the King Air 350i. And this is kind of the basic starting point, the file that I've created in order to give myself a heads up on kind of where things are gonna go inside of the model when I'm start painting my liveries. Now, this whole file and all of the layers came out of two components. And so I just want to go through how I got from the original files that come with Flight Simulator to this kind of well-structured Photoshop document that's going to help me paint things where I want them on the model. So I'm going to turn off all of these layers, and we're just going to start at the very bottom with the albedo. Now the albedo file describes the flat color that's being applied to the aircraft. And you can get this straight out of the airline liveries that come with Flight Simulator. So this is going to be the uh, this is the fuselage albedo file or albd.dds file, and I just exported that to a PNG, and then I place that as the first layer here inside of my document. Now this doesn't really give us a good idea on what's going to go where, and a lot of the early liveries that people were working with, they just took like their paint fill bucket and they said, okay, I want I want a yellow plane, so they picked up a yellow color, and they just did a flood fill, if I unlock it. They just did a flood fill and said, oh, there is my yellow plane. And now the problem with this is you're painting a lot of things you don't know what it is. And it's, you know, it's picking up a lot of pieces that are not part of the fuselage that are other components of the aircraft that you don't necessarily want to paint. And so I'm just going to undo that to get back to the original color. So what we need to do is kind of get our bearings and figure out what's what in this kind of mess. So the only other thing that we need is the UV map. I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer on there. The UV map represents the different polygons from the aircraft model that's used by the game. Now these files are coming out of, or this image anyway, is coming out of Blender mostly. And what people are doing is exporting the 3D models from the game and opening them up in Blender and they can get out this kind of polygon data. Now I've gone through and made sure I had a copy of this file that includes all the different pieces from this particular, from the fuselage. And that includes all of the different wings that are uh, and little fins and bits that are up on the top of the fuselage. This area up here represents all of the different components that are inside of the wheel well for the nose gear. And once we have all of those laid out, we can export what's called the UV map that gives us this kind of polygon information and starts to give us an idea of what's what inside of the aircraft. Now there's lots of little pieces you might not know what everything is, but this gives us kind of the major beats of what's going on. Now that once we have that, we can start creating some different files that are going to help us organize our artwork in Photoshop. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on this color, this layer here. This is just a base color is what I'm calling it. This is just a fill color. If you go down here to this little button here with the half circle and choose solid color, you can pick you know whatever color you want. And I've chosen blue. So that's just going to fill in a solid blue field back here so that we have something to work with on top of our albedo. So on top of that is going to be the UV map. So with our UV map selected, what I can do is use the magic wand tool and select everything that is not a polygon inside of the model. So anything that's kind of this pale blue color still, anything that doesn't represent it by this, these polygons. So I'm gonna click out here and that's gonna select most, uh, most of the file. And I'm just gonna go through and shift click these other open areas inside the windows around the cockpit. We've got the other windows on the fuselage. So I'm just gonna go through and select all of these. And so all of these are gonna represent areas that we do not need to color inside of our livery. So I'm gonna go select all that and we got this window here. And I think that is going to do it. Okay, so now that we have everything selected, what we can do is create a, a mask basically. So I'm gonna create a new layer. There's gonna be a new empty layer. And I'm going to press the D key on my keyboard to switch to my default colors. So it's black in the foreground, white in the background, and then tap the X key to flip those around. So now black is going to be in the background. 
and then I'll press Control or Command D or Command Delete on my keyboard, and that's going to fill everything that I have selected with black. So it's going to fill in my layer here. And if I turn off the UV map and press Control or Command D on my keyboard to deselect everything, you'll see what we have left. So let me turn on these layers here to turn off those layers. And we can see that I'm left with basically a black mask around everything that is not part of the 3D model for the plane. And this is going to help us as we create other areas, and it's going to help us make selections inside of our document. So I've got a copy of that here. It's what I call full mask. So I actually don't need this one because I have uh, another one right there. So that's the first file that I create. So we started with the UV map. We started with the albedo. The first thing I'm going to create is this full mask. It's just going to give me an outline of everything. I also create a copy of that in pink because sometimes it's easier to see kind of what you're painting on when you have a really high contrast. So if I'm painting something dark and I'm using a black mask, it's kind of hard to see where those edges are. So I'll just switch over to the pink version just to give myself that visual kind of separation. So it gives me the two files that I need or the two layers that I need in order to kind of start staying organized. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on the albedo again so I can start to see that there's some color variation in this model. Now, in the King Air that comes with Flight Simulator, the majority of the fuselage is white. And in fact, it's not pure white. If I do um, my eyedropper tool and select this color, you'll see that it's actually not pure white. It's 91% um, it's white, so uh, it's 9% darker than white. But in the game, it looks white when you light it. But we have lots of pieces that are different colors. So uh, like this piece right here, this, and these two little flaps here, these are part of the pitot tubes. And we have lots of different pieces around that I probably don't want to color in my livery, right? You don't want you don't want a yellow pitot tube if you have a yellow fuselage. You don't want yellow window trim. You want that to stay the aluminum or the steel color, the metal color. So we need to start selecting these pieces out so that we're not painting them in the livery. Now I've painstakingly gone through and I've actually colored each of these differently and then taken a look at them inside of the game or in Blender, you can load up the file inside of Blender as well. And for instance, I would um, maybe select the magic wand tool. With the mask selected, you can select one of these components. It'll put a little marching ants around it. You can create a new layer and then you can fill it with whatever color you want, right? And I'll just do a switch to my fill bucket and fill that in. And so now I've got a pink, whatever that is. And if you load this up into the game, you can figure out where that is, right? Or if you load it up in Blender, you can see, okay, well, what square or what piece turned pink? And after doing that with everything, I've been able to kind of break out what's what in this file. So let me go ahead and undo that. In fact, I just toss this layer. So what I've done is gone through and I've created some different components. So these are the different things that I probably don't want to change in my file. So we can go through what each of these are. And let's go ahead and turn on our base color. I'm going to turn off the masks. And we'll go through each of these files here. So in fact, let's, let's start at the bottom. So I've gone through and figured out, OK, what are the, the little bits that are on the top and the bottom of the fuselage? So there's lots of little wings, or I don't even know, I don't even know what they are. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a, a real pilot. But um, we have these little kind of, I don't know what they are, little flaps or little things that protrude from the top and the bottom of the fuselage. Some of them, there's like little round like sensor packages or something. But these are all the little things that stick up off the top and the bottom of the fuselage. These two pieces right here stick out of the tail. So there's two little squares that stick straight out of the tail on the sides. That's what those are. This piece right here is the kind of mounting bracket for the rectangles on either side of the tail. So lots of different pieces. Um, I'm just going to stick with those as the base color from the original albedo file. So what I've done is I've created a new uh, color adjustment layer. Let me take that off. So this is a color fill layer, I'm sorry. And I've chosen that same 91% brightness color for it. I have filled that in and I've created a layer mask that, that includes all of these pieces. Now, in order to do that, let's actually walk through that process real quick. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is go back to our masks, uh, our full mask. And using the magic wand, we just start selecting, make sure, that's select, make sure that the full mask layer is selected, and then we just start selecting components. So let's do the windshield, for instance. So I figured out that this piece, this piece, these two down here, oh, and I think
think that's gonna it's gonna pick up all of this just because it's connected right there so we'll come back and do that one in a second but i need this piece here and this piece here so all of these are part of the window frame in fact let's go ahead and select this and we'll fix that up in a minute so what i basically what i don't want is this big rectangle i only want this little bit here but we'll fix that in a minute so all of those pieces those four pieces combine the windshield and so i want to make sure that i'm not painting those in my livery so what i can do is go back to the original albedo file the original color i'm going to make a copy of this layer and we go ahead and just drag it up on top of the base color and then what with these still selected what i can do is select that copy and let's just call it windshield right now and then we'll come down to this button here the rectangle with a little circle out of it and this will create a mask and it's going to mask the original colors based off of the selection that I had just made. Now, the little thumbnail doesn't update on my screen immediately, but what we can do is press the Alt or Option key and then click into that and you'll see what the mask contains. So the mask is basically showing me what areas of the original color from the albedo is going to show through the mask and be presented on top of this base color. So when I look at it and turn off my this kind of overlay, we're gonna see just the areas that I selected from the original color of the original albedo on top of the base blue color. Now I said I don't want this whole big piece right here, so what I need to do is go into the mask by pressing Alt or Option, clicking into the mask, and now what I can do is paint black in order to get rid of this piece here. So let me zoom in here, and I'll press M to switch to my marquee selection tool because I want not this little bit there. So I'm just gonna select that, switch over to my brush, um, press, let's see, press X to get that to the foreground color, and I'll just paint in black here. And then I can deselect everything. And now I can be a little bit more sloppy. So we're just gonna paint all of this out. And make sure that's nice and black. Okay, so that gets rid of that piece that was not part of the windshield. And so now when I click back into this file or this particular layer, you'll see that I have extracted the color of the windshield pieces that I want to keep from the original albedo file. So then I could take this file or this layer, the windshield layer, and I can lock it and I say, okay, that's good. I'm not going to paint that layer. And basically what I've done is gone through all of these components and figured out what they were and kind of grouped them together. And so, in fact, I can get rid of this windshield, which is a little bit different, but that's okay. Let's get rid of this one, and we'll sub in the one that I just made. So what I've done is gone through and figured out what's what. So I've got a layer that describes kind of vents, the pitot tube. Um, so we've got these little vent feet pieces here. This is actually the shaded area of the vent inside of a vent that appears on the side of the nose. Um, this little bit that is, I think this is an antenna, I believe. On the back of the aircraft, there's another one here. A couple of different components. So those are miscellaneous things. Then there's the door handle on the side of the door. And we can kind of turn these on and off and see what's what. Uh, in fact, if I turn off the guides here. So these pieces here all correspond to different components of the door handle that's on the side of the craft. Then we have the wheel well, which is a lot of pieces. And it's actually surprising how much of this file is made up of just the wheel well on the front nose of the aircraft. So we have inside the wheel well, left and right side. This is the inside of the gear door. This is the kind of top surface of the wheel well, all the different wires and things inside the wheel well. Um, and then we have our windshield that we just made. And then we have our top and bottom bits. So these are all of the pieces. Let me turn all of those on. So these are all of the pieces that I do not want to touch when I'm making my livery. And so I just go ahead and put them in a folder. I'll lock that folder. And I could go back and change them if I want to. If for some reason I do want to color those top and bottom bits, I could just come in here, unlock it, and you know maybe I want them dark blue for some reason. I could just change that color fill, and suddenly they're all dark blue. So it makes it really easy to do see these like subtle adjustments. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So those are the original textures. Don't want to change those. Go ahead and lock that whole group. Collapse that down. And that kind of gives me a good start. So let me turn on my mask again so I can see. And now everything that's left are the components of the aircraft that I do want to color for my livery. So I've got the nose, the back tail, the middle of the fuselage. This is the uh, 
pilot side of the fuselage, underneath the back tail. These are like little fins that appear on the bottom of the fuselage in the back. And then we have the vent itself and the little fins for the vent and a couple other little, little bits and bobs. And that basically does it. So now it makes it really easy to change the kind of the base color of my livery. I can just double click on this. I can change it to you know whatever I want. And I'm not going to change everything else that's in the file. So I can make it, you know, if I want to go to, ugh, not that, <laughs> um, you know, whatever. Uh, if I want to go to like a forest green or something like that, we could do something like that. So there is kind of an army green version of the plane. So it makes it really easy to, to, to work with a file, to, to make your edits, to make subtle adjustments without having to go through and do a whole lot of work. Now, the other thing that this sets up is that when we're painting on the aircraft, we can also target our edits to just specific places. So what I can do is create a new layer here. And in fact, let's actually ditch that and create it as a solid color layer again. So we're going to create a new one. Yeah. Brr. Hello. Let's go back to blue. When you add in a new color adjustment layer, it gives you a mask that we can edit. So what we can do here is say, for instance, if I wanted the front of the plane to be a different color, what we can do is use our full mask that we created at the very beginning. I'll switch to the magic wand tool and I'll select the front. I'll select the nose and I'll select the bottom and I'll press alt or option, go into the mask. And then what I can do is fill it with black. So I'll flip my colors around, fill it with black, deselect everything. And then I need to invert this. So I'll press control or command I to invert that mask. And when I switch back, that gives me these three pieces in the blue color. And now if I need to do some subtle adjustments, maybe I want to make this, you know, a slightly different shade of green, for instance, I can, you know, whatever. So now I'd have a light green front and then the rest of the plane would be black. And we can take this another step further. I can create another layer. And let's say I only want to work on the transition between this piece and the main portion of the fuselage, which is these three pieces right here. So what we can do is go back to our full mask, switch to my magic wand again. I'll select these three and well, that's not going to matter. Um, and then we'll switch over to my layer one. And what I can do is press this one. I'll pick up this bright green color. I'll switch my brush to a large brush and I'll just do a little paint straight down like that. And now what I've done is created a layer, deselect everything. So now the front of the plane is lime green, it's bright green. It's then going to fade in this area. It's going to transition. And in fact, I probably didn't want this piece. I probably only wanted these two because this is the main or the middle portion of the fuselage and the bottom of the fuselage. So I actually don't want this, but because we have it as layers, it makes it really easy. I can just, you know, I can just view this layer all by itself and I can say, Oh, you know what? I actually don't want this piece here. So let's go ahead and select it and I'll switch over to my eraser tool, switch back to layer one and we'll just make this big and we'll just get rid of all of that. And I can be real sloppy with it because I made a selection. I'm not going to erase down here. It's only going to erase what I've made a selection in. So I'll press command D to deselect everything and we'll turn everything back on again. Uh, I want my original textures. I want my mask there. So now what we can do is see, I've got a lime green front and it's going to transition in this area with a gradient to this kind of army green color. And then the back of the plane is going to be army green, right? So by having everything split up into the different layers, by having my original textures there, they're protected I'm, and they're on top. So I'm not going to accidentally change their color. And I have my masks here in order to be able to make quick selections of the different components. And that's basically it. At this point, it's just a matter of being real creative with your selections, with layer masks, with these fill adjustment layers, um, so that you kind of get the look that you're going for in your aircraft designs. So I'm hoping that's helpful. I'm hoping that you've picked up a tip or trick or two that you can use when working with your liveries and staying organized when you're working with your Photoshop piles. Thanks, and we'll see you